drive or some passion in your life. If you want to motivate your team, I believe all of you are leaders of your respective teams or that's what I've been told. You're leaders of the LDGs, right? That's right. Now, if you want to motivate them, you have to be motivated yourself. It's extremely important. It's like if I have to teach you maths, I have to be good at maths. That's right. Does it make sense? If I have to teach you football, I have to be good at football. Otherwise, you're not going to learn. So if you want to motivate your, your team, whatever that team is, if your family, you want to motivate your family, for example, you have to be motivated yourself, driven yourself. Now, today we are going to talk about the challenges that we face when we try to motivate ourselves. Because that's the real thing. I can tell you like, you know, some flashy stuff and some good stuff like, you know, you can motivate yourself or you can motivate your team by doing this, that, the other, but that's not going to make sense unless you are motivated. So let's talk about the challenges that we face when we try to motivate ourselves. And unfortunately, these are the things, we were just discussing that in the car when we were coming here, that these are the things should, that should be taught in, the, in schools, at school level, to all the children. But we haven't been taught. We don't even know what motivation is, honestly. We just talk about motivation, but we don't know what motivation is. Can somebody just tell me what motivation is? Like according to you, what is motivation? Great stuff, yes. Anybody else? Spirit to do what you can. Mm -hmm. Spirit to do what you can. Spirit to do what you can. One more definition, if somebody can. All of you are right. Bright future taraf ta, ya yo goal taraf ta. Munga, drive ka, is that right? You may be distinguished from others. Mm, yes, if you are motivated, you will be distinguished from the others because not many people are motivated. So you are right there, right? Motivation basically are external or internal factors that actually drives you towards the goal, as you all said. Okay? But can you just think about this, that where do we get motivation from actually? We know, like, you know, we have heard this thing so many times in our lives that, you know, I want to lose weight, but I lack motivation. I have to look for a new job, but I lack motivation. Uh, if I had more motivation, I would have achieved this, this thing. If I had more motivation, I would have achieved greater grades, right? It's all about motivation. But we never think about, like, you know, why we don't get motivation. Like, what are the people doing? Like, you know, for example, you are motivated and you are not. Have you ever thought that what is this guy doing to be more motivated? That's a valid question, right? But we never ask that question. So we don't get answers. If you don't ask a question, you will not get answers. It's as simple as that. If you ask a question, that's the beginning of enlightenment. Like, you, know, you will somehow, sometime, at some point in your life, get the answer. But if you start asking questions, Okay? So we're going to look at some of those questions that what is Mr. Motivated doing that Mr. Demotivated is not doing, right? The number one thing, motivation comes from excitement. If you are excited about something, you will feel motivated about that. Let's suppose you were excited about today's meeting. You would be motivated to come here. If you were not excited about the meeting, it would have been very hard for you to come today. Waking up early in the morning, for example, setting yourself up and then coming here, if you were not excited. Think about it. Job ke liye utna bada mushkil hota hai liye. It's very difficult for us to get up early in the morning. Job or even studies or school or university, right? But when we are going on a holiday, and let's suppose you're going on a dream holiday. How many of you have been to Europe? No one, right? Let's suppose you are going to Europe with your friends, with your favorite friends, with a smaller group. And uh, this is a, it's a holiday of a lifetime you've been waiting for. You don't feel sleepy on the night. And you still wake up early in the morning before your alarm clock goes off. Do you know what the difference is? The difference is that you are excited, right? Because excitement in return gives you energy. You need energy to do stuff. You will go on a holiday, you will sleep three or four hours every night and you will still feel energized for all the days because you are excited. So we need to find excitement. This guy, if he's motivated, 
Maybe he has found something that he's excited about. Maybe he has found the excitements in his life. And that's why he is motivated. So what's your excitement? Or why are you not excited? Have you ever thought about this? Okay, why am I not excited about the thing that I'm doing? I know I'm doing great stuff, for example. If I'm part of an organization that is helping poor children or youth, or for example, women empowerment, that's a, th th these are all great causes. Nobody can argue that these are great causes. But ask yourself this question, that why am I still not feeling excited? That's the main question, right? Number one, have you identified what your passion is? The thing that you're doing, are you really passionate about this? It's a great cause, that's a separate thing, I'm not questioning that. But are you really excited about what you're doing? Do you know what this thing that you're doing right now, in whichever capacity you're doing, do you know where this is taking you? Have you defined a vision for your life? Oh no, you're just stumbling through life. Like, you know, stumble here. If it doesn't work, I'll stumble there. Change this, change that. Uh, want to become an engineer, I fail ETA, so now let's become an MBA. If I don't become that, let's do law. Like, you know, we're stum We're becoming accidental professionals. People are lawyers here because they couldn't make it to business schools. Very few lawyers, I'm not talking about all, very few lawyers are the people who are there by passion. Like one of my cousins, he is basically a lawyer by passion. He studied arts even in matric because he was clear in his mind that this is what I want to become. But most of the professionals, even engineers, doctors, they are there, psychologists. I know a few people that are doing psychology because they couldn't become doctors. So they were so addicted to that white thing, like, you know, the, what is it called? Overall, overall, right, yeah? So they, 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 they said, like, you know, this is the only other field that we can wear this thing in. So if you are you're taking decision uh, based on such pity things, right? Do you think you have a vision for your life? No. So if you don't have a vision for your life, how are you going to be excited about the step that you're taking? It's like, for example, you are going upstairs. You're taking one step at a time, but you don't know that where I'm going, whether it's going to take me to something somewhere good or somewhere bad. You don't know that. And you haven't even defined how many steps do I want to take to get there. You don't know the answers of your questions. You don't have, number one, you don't have a vision for your life. You don't have a vision because you don't have a passion in life. Passion is that uncontrollable emotion that comes from the inside that makes you excited about a certain thing. Right? So identify what your passion is and how you can identify what your passion is when you ask yourself, again ask yourself a few questions. What is it, what is that something that you can do even for free? In case, we do stuff for money as well and money is a requirement. I'm not denying that as well. I'm not here to say like, you know, money is bad or evil or something. No, money is a very uh, proper requirement in our society. You want to send your children to school. You want to uh, lead a good life. You want to care for your health or your loved ones. You need money. But ask yourself, what is, it, what is that something that you can do even for free? That can be your passion. Ask yourself, what is it that, that something that you do and it gives you inner satisfaction and joy? The fulfillment from the inside. Are you feeling fulfilled right now? Or is it, like, you know, don't answer me, but ask yourself and answer yourself that are you feeling fulfilled in the thing that you're doing right now? Within the same organization, if you assume a different uh, role, you might feel more fulfilled. Right? And then ask yourself another question that, okay, I think I am passionate about this thing, but is it really a passion or is it an attraction? That's another confusion that we all have. Like my students, I ask them in the personality development class, uh, what do you want to do in your life? Uh, that's, the, that's one of the most common questions that we ask in, in class. And that's the question we should have been asked in schools, honestly, right? And not just ask, okay, what do you want to become pilot? Oh, great stuff, good job. What do you want to become doctor? Oh, great, he wants to become doctor. No, ask, why? Why do you want to become doctor? Why do you want to do CSS, for example? One of my students said, I want to do CSS, which is great, fine. Not many people can do it. 
You want to do CSS, why? Uh, well, I want to do CSS because, now he's thinking at that moment. I want to do CSS because, uh, 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 for power. Okay, fine. So, which power? There are so many like sections, like, and you can so many fields, not fields, but departments that you can go to if you do CSS, right? Okay, so what kind of power? Um, police. Okay, great. So when you get power, and you become a policeman or whatever you want to become, what are you going to do with that power? And just enjoy it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is this is what the level of consciousness that we have. Now, this guy is fully motivated, he thinks, he is fully motivated to become a CSS officer, but he doesn't know why he wants to become one. And what difference he will make in the society because he has never asked himself these questions. That why do I want to become this? And when I get there, for example, what would I do when I get there? The department that I get to, I want to do something in society. And for that change, my life ka vision, hai, for example, that I want to make a difference in the society in a certain area. Don't just be vague. Don't go away. I just want to contribute to the society. What capacity can I contribute? You can do any policeman. You can do a waiter. You can do a teacher. You can do a farmer. You can do any capacity you want to contribute. Karna so set a vision for your life and make sure that it's your passion, not attraction. Now in this case, CSS, I can fully assure you that this guy is attracted to this because one of his uncles probably is a CSS officer and he has seen him in the car with the flag and the protocol that he gets, etc, etc, <laughs> or the, the power that he has. So that attracts him and he thinks that he is basically passionate about it. He's not passionate. He's attracted towards that. Now, how are you going to find out? Like this may be the next question that, okay, uh, so how do we find out that I am actually attract, not passionate about it and not attracted to this? Does anyone have a clue? How would you find out that you are actually passionate about a certain thing and not just attracted towards it? Any insights? Think, 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 think. Mm-hmm. Nee, mehnat to uske baad aayega, which is right. Mehnat uske baad aayega. Lekin how do you know in the start? Ke thik hai, mehne soul searching ki, brainstorming ki, aur ab mein is natiye pe pahunchi hoon ke this is my passion. But how, do, how am I sure that ki ye passion hai aur attraction nahi hai? Bada simple sa hai. It looks simple and it is simple. You don't require any intellectual brilliance to understand this. You just require to ask yourself this question and think about it. Now let me tell you, you know that you are passionate about something and not just attracted if you're not just in love with the final product and you are in love with the process. <coughs> a lot of the times, for example, somebody wants to become a fitness model. To become a fitness model, you have to have a certain kind of physique. And to achieve that certain kind of physique, you have to spend a lot of time in the gym, you have to fine tune your diet, nutrition and everything. And after that, like you know, after uh, hard work of a couple of years or three, four years, you might be able to achieve that physique. And then the journey starts. Then you start trying in different uh, places to become a fitness model, for example, right? Now, a lot of the people, they are attracted to that. Like, now if you ask anybody, do you want to become a fitness model? Most of the people are attracted. Why? Because there is fame, there is money, there is uh, good uh, health, for example, good physique. So, like, you know, it's a win-win situation. You get money, you get fame, you get good physique, good health, and it's all a luxurious lifestyle and all these things. So, if you ask somebody, you are, are you interested in that? Oh, yes, I am. Okay. So... Uh, what to do next? Uh, you have to spend like three, four hours in the gym every single day. Three, four hours, right? You have to take time. Oh, no, I'm too busy for that. I'm too busy for that. So the guy is actually in love with the final product, but he is not in love with the process. Now, if he starts forcing himself to do that process, like in case of CSS, the guy is in love with the final product that I can have a big car with a flag, right, and with protocol, but I'm not in love with the process of actually preparing for CSS, which is in, in itself a very hard thing to do. So if you force yourself into that process, 
you will have to go through a lot of stress. That's where all the stress and these things come. Like a person would be a normal person, a happy, jolly person, and all of a sudden he gets things like anxiety disorders and depressions and stuff. And you, you think to yourself, like, you know, why did this guy get this? Like, you know, he has no problem in his life. Well, the problem is that he may be forcing himself into something that he doesn't want to do. And that's the story of the most people in our lives. We are accidental professionals. We are doing stuff that we are not interested in doing. And the only reason is that we haven't asked ourselves questions. We don't have a why. Like, you know, we are doing something, we don't know why. If you have a why, you can get there. Now, if you have a why, see, this is such a powerful thing. If you have a why, then you can never get disheartened if you fail to achieve something. Why is that? Let's suppose my why is to contribute to the society and I can do this, um, let's say, I want to make some reforms or whatever your goal is. I want to do something in the society and I know that's something. Whatever that something is, you decide. Okay? I have this why and I have chosen the field of CSS for that, for example. That I know, when I'll do CSS, I'll be able to make this um, change in the society that I'm dreaming of. Okay? Now, if I fail to achieve that, like, you know, CSS, I, let's suppose I appeared in the exam and I failed. I did it for the, the times that it's allowed and now I cannot take more CSS exams or the ages, for example, like, you know, have gone over. So, I will not be disappointed because I still know my why. And I can achieve that why by doing something else. So why is actually more important than the goal that you set? Why is part of your vision, the vision for your life? Oh, please have a vision for your life. Don't just lead life like, you know, just wake up early in the morning and do something that you don't know why you're doing and then just like, you know, go to job, come back, watch TV, sleep, go next morning and you don't know why you're doing this. You don't actually know why. The only why that we have is money. We switch jobs just based on money. We don't switch jobs based on the passion or why. So it's extremely important for you to be motivated. You have to know the why's of your life. That why am I doing this? Then you can, like, you know, when you are answering that why and you are uh, sure that this is your passion, it's not attraction, you're entrusted in the process, you will enjoy every step of the way. Because it's not the final goal that actually gives you happiness, honestly. It's the process that gives you happiness. If you're just going for the final goal, for example, when you get there, you will somehow not feel satisfied. That's why you see most people, they want to set up business. And once they become successful, they're still depressed. They're still not happy. One in four successful CEOs, 25% of successful CEOs are suffering from depression. Like in making a lot of money. They have achieved what they set out to achieve, having a great business, CEO of a big organization, having all the financial independence in the world, their children are leading great lives, they are living in a great house, having a great car, but I still need to take depression pills. Because I just did that for money. I didn't have a why. I'm not feeling fulfilled. You're born to achieve something to make you feel fulfilled. This is the ultimate.